You know, as we cozy up for the fourth quarter holidays and feel the temperatures dropping, there's nothing quite like wrapping yourself in the warmth of an all-over print item like a duvet and throw blankets. They're not just home decor, they're expressions of your unique style and creativity. Hey everybody, it's Brian here, welcome back to my channel. You know, now is the perfect time to get those holiday designs flowing, to make your clients' homes feel festive. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I harness the power of ChatGPT and Midjourney to craft stunning Christmas patterns that will bring joy to your space. Plus, I'll guide you on how to upload them to a print-on-demand platform so you can share your creations with the world just in time for the festive season. So let's dive in and get those holiday vibes rolling. Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. As you can see, we're currently on ChatGPT. And basically what I did was I typed in, I wish to generate some prompts pertaining to Christmas patterns and Christmas abstracts for an AI image generator like Midjourney to create some images for me. These images will be tiled and transferred onto all over print garments like duvets and throw blankets. Can you provide me with 10 such prompts? And obviously, ChatGPT came back with 10 very interesting prompts. And I already went ahead and put these into Midjourney so that I don't have to show you the whole process of that. Let's head over to Midjourney right now so that we can see what results we got back from using these prompts that ChatGPT gave us. Okay, so here's the first one. Create an abstract Christmas pattern that incorporates traditional holiday colors like red and green with a modern twist, dash, dash, tile. Okay, so if I click on these, we've got four really nice sort of abstract Christmas colors. This could be great for, you know, items like wrapping paper, even, you know, in terms of throw blankets and duvet covers. If somebody wants to dress their living room or bedroom um, with a Christmas duvet or Christmas throw that has Christmassy colors, why not something like this too? Okay, so the next one was design a repeating pattern inspired by classic Christmas ornaments such as baubles, candy canes, and snowflakes, dash, dash, tile. Now, I think these came out really, really nice. Um, I think for me personally, the first one is what I found really impressive. I love the contrast in the colors. You've got a nice navy blue in the background and the colors of the reds and the yellows in the baubles really make it stand out nice. This could really be a nice throw for you know for a living room or for a bedroom um or even for wrapping paper or maybe a sweater basically any all over print product that's out there in the print on demand industry this design could really work well on anything and all of it okay so let's take a look at the third one here now generate an abstract representation of a cozy christmas fireplace scene with stockings a crackling fire and festive decorations dash dash tile are you noticing what I am finishing my prompts with? This dash dash tile is fundamentally important when you are downloading any of the images generated on whichever AI image generator you are using. So when you bring it into you know a platform like Canva or Photoshop or Photopea or any other kind of design program, you're going to have an image that when you join them together is going to have a seamless join. It's going to flow and you're not going to have to stay worrying about trying to align it and get it straight on. So it's really important that you put in dash dash tile. No spaces between the last dash and tile. When you do, if you do do that, you're going to come back with an error. So avoid that and you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one more here, um, just so that this video won't be very long. Create a vibrant and joyful pattern featuring Santa Claus, reindeer and elms in a whimsical and abstract style, dash dash tile. So we just click on it and enlarge it a little bit. Again, we've got some really interesting tiled images that we can use. And in truth, I mean, I could even go so far as to ask ChatGPT to provide me prompts in a style of a particular artist or a particular painter or a particular, I don't know, style of, of, of artistry, be it graffiti, be it abstract, be it anime. I mean, what you can do with ChatGPT and these image generating pro platforms like Midjourney is only limited by your creativity. And the great thing about it is that there's really and truly no way of making a mistake. If it doesn't work, you just refine and try again. So. You know, you could go down a rabbit hole, creating amazing images, asking ChatGPT to come up with some amazing prompts for you, and you can create some great things that you can upload to your print-on-demand shops and really give your clients something to chew on when they come to your shop in search of things for Christmas. And let me remind you, while this episode is focusing on Christmas imagery, 
There's nothing stopping you from doing what I'm showing you in this video for any niche, for any holiday, for any, basically for anything that you want to create for your print on demand shop. Okay, now that we've actually gone through the first five of them, I mean, I'll just show you very quickly some of the other images, very, very quickly going through them, just so that you can see what was generated. I'm going to leave these prompts in a document that you can request permission to download from. And I'm also going to mention a free bonus at the end of this video to tie into these prompts that you definitely don't want to miss. So stick around for that. Okay, so now that we've generated our images, let's go back to that bobble one. I really liked it, it really resonated with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on U1 to upscale it. And we'll wait a few moments for Mid Journey to come back with it. There we go. And I'm just going to click on it and look at this. I mean, it's really, really beautiful. I, it's colorful. It's festive. It really speaks to Christmas. So we're just going to hit right click. We're going to save the image. And then I'm just going to rename it and we'll call it Christmas Bobbles. And we'll just hit enter so that it will be saved in the folder. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is head over to Canvas so that we can work with this image. Let's go. Okay, so here I am on Canva and the first thing I want to do is I want to click on create a design and because of the fact that I want to use this image um, for all over prints, I want to make sure that I'm choosing um, a canvas size that is relatively large. So we're going to click on custom size here and for this example, I'm going to choose 2400 by 2400 pixels. So now that we have this canvas here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the image that I just saved from Mid Journey from a folder which is off camera and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into Canva. And as you can see here, we, it's on the canvas size, but it's a little bit too large for the moment because I, what I want to do is I want to duplicate this three more times and lay them right next to each other. So I'm going to take this image, drag it up to the top corner here and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag the bottom right handle and I'm going to drag it up until I see the guidelines appear in Canva showing me that you know I'm covering one quarter of this canvas. So I'm really happy with that. That works fine. So now I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit control D on the keyboard or command D if you're on a Mac and I've effectively just duplicated this image. So now I've got two of them. Now I have an option. I can either place it underneath or I can place it on the top right hand corner. So let's just place it on the top right hand corner. And I know I'm perfectly aligned because Canva shows me the guidelines as you can see them on the screen right now. So I'm going to let go. Now I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click on the first one. So effectively now what has happened is I have highlighted both images. And again, I'm going to hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. And I'm going to drag it down here. Okay. And again, Canvas showing me that I'm perfectly aligned. Okay, so now once I've placed them underneath, um, I'm just going to click outside, make sure that they're perfectly aligned. Let's zoom in a little bit. And as you can see here, we don't have any joints anywhere. As I hover my mouse button, obviously we get those purple lines to indicate the border of each of the four images on the this canvas. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out over here. Don't worry if you're seeing that white line. As you saw, as I zoomed in, obviously those disappear. So the next thing that I want to do is I just want to download that and save that to my computer so that obviously I can then upload it onto my respective print on demand shops. So we're just going to click on share. And what we'll do is we'll click on download just above me. And what we want to do, we don't need to worry about transparent background. We want to make sure that it's saved as a PNG, very important. What you want to do just for organizational sake is you want to click up over here and just give the image a title so that it will be easy to find on your hard drive. So let's just call it Christmas Bubbles. Click on download and then download again. And then obviously the image is starting to download. Here we are on Redbubble. I know that a lot of my followers on this channel are still using Redbubble and given the fact that, you know, it is still your platform of choice, I want to respect your decision irrespective of what's been going on with Redbubble and still show you how you can go about gaining as much success on this platform as you possibly can. And guys, for those of you who are not using Redbubble, you can still put into practice what I'm about to show you onto any and all other print on demand platforms that you use. Obviously, every platform is going to be a little different in terms of the uploading process, but you know, the methodology effectively is still going to be the same. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag the image that we've downloaded from Canva onto the upload new work section. 
and we'll wait for Redbubble to upload it. Now, as it is uploading, very, very soon, you're going to start seeing this image start to being generated and obviously laid over all of the images that are available on Redbubble. As you can see here, the standard print clothing, large print clothing, hats, etc. What I am looking for in this particular case are just those products that are all over print in nature. If they're not all over print in nature, I am going to turn them off. Um, there have been people in the past who stated, you know, you should allow your images to be active and enabled on any and all products that are available on the print on demand platform. I tend to disagree with that because more often than not, if you are shooting for design that's all over print in nature, and a product doesn't allow for that, nine times out of 10, it's not gonna look that great on it. And you know, you have to ask yourself, what kind of message are you sending to a potential client if you're allowing for products to be you know, displayed with images that aren't going to be showcased in a nice way, that aren't going to look great. So, you know, this is where you want to be a little bit nitpicky. This is where you wanna spend those few extra minutes to make sure that the products that you are enabling are those that are going to showcase your design in the best possible light. And in this case, I disagree with the fact that standard print clothing, large print clothing, and hats, so I'm gonna turn those off. What I will turn on is the chiffon tops because I do know that these are all over print in nature. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our image laid over the template for the chiffon to uh, tops, but understandably, it's not large enough to cover the entire image. Um, unfortunately, Canva will only allow you to go so large in terms of a canvas size, but don't worry, Redbubble has a workaround. All you need to do is just click on regular grid over here, and when you do that, it's going to duplicate the pattern. It's going to cover the entire canvas area, in fact, the entire area as you can see over here, and now I know that the image that I created has been basically scaled over the entire chiffon top, so we're going to click on apply image changes here, and if I go back to the top, we can see here now the mock-up of the chiffon top is sufficiently covered with the entire image. Now, if you don't want to use Canva and you don't want to go through this step in order to obviously have to click on regular grid each time, what you could do as well is you could go onto Photo P. Um, what you can do is you can create a canvas 10,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels. And then what you can do is you can duplicate the image as I showed you in Canva so that you're going to get a nice... 10,000 by 10,000 pixel canvas with this repeating tile pattern. And when you flatten it and save it and then bring it and upload it into Redbubble, it's gonna be so large, you won't have to go through the process of clicking on the regular grid pattern. Okay, so that's just a step that you want to use. If you're happy to use Canva and you want to create you know, the, the repeat pattern as you just saw me do here, that's absolutely fine. You're gonna do whatever works best for you. So we're gonna enable the dresses too as well. We're going to click on that and again we're going to click on choose pattern and then we'll just click on regular grid apply changes and then as you can see here now the dress is sufficiently covered with this particular pattern but as i stated earlier we're shooting for you know duvet covers and throw blankets because those are you know during the winter months people want to cuddle up in their living room or on their bed with a nice blanket or a nice duvet but as you can see here, as I'm scrolling through stickers and magnets, you've got phone cases, you've got the pillows, we can enable mouse pads, you can even do desk mats too as well. I mean, there's quite a number of products on this particular platform where an all-over print would work very, very nice, okay? you got your print cards, your even your pouches and laptops. Let's just see how that's going to look. We're going to choose pattern, choose regular grid, and boom, there you go. Even in terms of pet products too as well. Here's the duvets, here are the duvets, so we're going to click on enable that and we'll just click on choose pattern, click regular grid and there you have it. We've got this nice all over tiled print um, for duvets, comforters and even shower curtains. Um, people have shower curtains in their, their showers and they would like to change it for Christmas Eve feel. Well, you know, you can actually give your these potential clients um, an option to buy one too as well. And let's put it this way. And in all products that are all over in print that look good, that will actually, you know, enhance the professionality of your shop, the better the likelihood that people are going to like what they see and the greater the chances that they're going to click that add to cart button and purchase the product. You know, when I stop and think about where we were this time last year in terms of creating designs for our respective print on demand shops to where we are today, you know, with the advent of platforms like Midjourney and ChatGPT, Ideogram, 
and so many other AI platforms out there that have effectively really made our jobs so much easier and so much more convenient to create amazing images for our print-on-demand platforms that, you know, in truth, all it takes is just our creativity and imagination and, you know, a little bit of time in front of our respective devices to create some really amazing images that we can offer for our clients. Gone are the days where you had to be an expert in programs like Photoshop or Illustrator and know how to use a graphic pen and, and all of these other things. Now I know for you know your, those old timers like me out there who are probably saying that I, I'm, I'm being sacrilegious to this too as well. Yes, there is a lot of value in learning those programs. There is a lot of value in learning how to create great graphics and great designs. I'm not discounting that. What I'm saying is that we need to find a nice healthy balance between the two, but because of the fact that we've got these tools available to us now, it doesn't mean that we don't use them to our advantage to try and increase the amount of products that we offer to our clients, particularly during this busy time of the year, or rather the busy time of year that's soon upon us, the fourth quarter, so that we can maximize our sales and obviously, you know, do really great so that come January, we can say that we did our all, our very best in giving our clients that which they were looking for. Great designs, great products, you know, and something that's gonna put a smile on the face of the people who they have gifted these products with. Now, earlier in today's video, I said that I was going to be providing you with the 10 prompts that I use in today's video. I'm gonna put them in a PDF document which I'm going to link in the description box down below, but I'm also going to include another 15 for you. So you're gonna have 25 prompts in total so that you don't have to spend time doing that on ChatGPT. You can just effectively copy those prompts, paste them into platforms like Midjourney, Blue Willow, even Ideogram if you want to, whatever image editing program you would like to use to create images for your print on demand platform so that you can actually get these products up and running in the here and now because very soon there are going to be a ton of people going onto these platforms like Redbubble, Zazzle, Society6, Etsy, Merch by Amazon. Basically, they're going to be looking for gifts to buy for themselves, for loved ones, for friends and colleagues. And you want to make sure that your designs are up at the top when they start going onto these platforms to start looking so that they will be, you know, enticed to purchase yours. So I certainly hope that you found value in today's video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning on that bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video to my channel. Help me to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year. I know that with your help, I'll be able to reach that goal. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to do so. If you are interested in taking your print-on-demand business to the next level and learning how to generate more sales, please consider clicking on one of the two video thumbnails that have appeared on your screen now. I'll see you there. Thanks again.